Hi ladies and gents, Pond here with another video for Rise of Empires, Ice and Fire. Thank you so much for all your previous likes, comments and subscriptions to the channel. If you haven't subscribed already, why not click on that button and ring the bell so you can get notifications of whenever I'm dropping content on the channel. And now onto the topic of this video, and we have some new tech in the game. The devs dropped it yesterday on Wednesday the 9th of March in 2022, and we have Raider Legion tech. So if we go into our Imperium news, you're going to see new tech Raider Legion out now. My lord, the new tech Raider Legion was unveiled. The tech will further enhance the combat capabilities of different unit types and increase the marching speed of archers and footmen. So, potentially helping to even out the disparity between the all-conquering cavalry troop type and the lesser archers and footmen. Obviously, one of the benefits of having cavalry is that they have a much faster marching speed. Um, that does therefore limit archers and footmen's ability, particularly in Reign of Chaos seasons and um, on Eden maps where you're trying to hit targets, for instance, uh, you know, trying to hit a structure from far away or attack a tile that's been garrisoned, etc. Um, obviously, you're always going to probably use cavalry just because of the reduced um, time it takes for them to get there. Next big thing on this announcement, war badges, courage medals and regular resources will be required in upgrading the Raider Legion tech. It was always going to be this way. It's another avenue for the devs to generate revenue. Um, war badges. I mean, it's going to be. It's tough for free-to-play players and small spenders like myself to uh, generate war badges in your account. You can only get so many um, every Reign of Chaos season. You can only generate so many from the trading shop and and the token shop and everything else. So um, I think again, this is going to be. Uh, this is going to cause a greater disparity between. Your top spenders who can just drop three or four thousand dollars in one day, max this tech out straight away, and gain all the extra buffs compared to the rest of us. But uh, that's just a reality of what we live in, I'm afraid. Courage medals. I'm not surprised to see this either because um, you know, for instance, in my position as a um, you know an, ex an experienced player, nearly three years into the game, I maxed my master research. I don't know, probably eight or nine months ago, I've had just courage medals accruing in my account. Like I think I've got 670,000, something like that. So of course they were always gonna use courage medals as well. Again, this is gonna be a barrier for those of you that are kind of progressing to this tech um, naturally in the, in the game as you progress. Um, and here's some more information about when you're going to actually be able to access this tech for those of you that are just starting out on your Rise of Empires journey or maybe you're you know a little bit into the game and you're, you've heard about this tech and you, you're watching this video to find out more information. So the castle and the institute, you have to have the castle and the institute reach level 25. Uh, that's not surprising. And available in season X2 or above. So X2 is generally 18 months into the lifespan of playing the game and... Um, yeah, I mean, you're probably going to be still maybe, if you're a free-to-play player or a small spender, you're probably still um, trying to max out your master tech at that point. So, And of course, if you are a small spender as well, you want to be using your war badges on lofty warrior tech. So it's going to really stretch those who are... Um, who don't have budgets for this game or have small budgets. But let's have a look into the tech menu and see what's going on then. So here we are in our Institute menu and you can see that Raider Legion is down here next to Lofty Warrior. When we click on that, we're gonna see there is a full tree of new uh, research nodes for you to complete. And the first section, as often is the case with research, is split into the three different troops type, footmen, cavalry, and archers. The only difference is usually cavalry is on the right. And this first section is front Footmen squads might increase. So the way this uh, technology works is the further you uh, progress down the tree, first it starts with uh, your front squad in the Legion, then it goes to the med middle squad, and then it goes to the back squad, uh, and then it buffs them. So in this section, you've got extra might, only 10%, and also after that, you've got extra resistance, which is also only 10% increases. To be honest with you, that's not a significant increase. Uh, when you think some people are pushing, top spenders are pushing over a thousand might uh, in certain circumstances now, uh, this is what a one percent difference. And so probably if you if you're coming up, for instance, if you're in a new state and you're coming up against players that have maxed this element of it, that won't be a deciding factor. But there are other benefits and buffs that this lead, uh, this research gives that will have a significant impact on you. So let's move down the tree. 
front resistance is next. So this is going to increase your front squad's tactical resistance. So of course that front squad takes the most damage. Um, you're going to want to ha having extra tactical resistance is, is a good buff. And this does also increase by 10%. Now that is a more significant buff compared to the might and resistance in the earlier segments because your tactical resistance for most players is going to be probably around 100 105 percent um and so getting another 10 percent on that is obviously you know it's giving you around a 10 percent boost so that is a good that is definitely something that people are going to work have to work to interestingly you can see initially they are quite low levels needed for these first sections like 222 war badges there 242 courage medals and then you're going to need gold and other normal resources I will talk about the total amounts required in a bit once we get to the bottom of the tree because some top spenders have completed this yesterday on day one of course um, so and there is a bit of information floating around on the forums and the message groups about how, how, how much it's costing in terms of resources and badges and everything. Next up is these raid by sections and this are the segments that are going to increase your marching speed so I'm happy to see that these are coming quite early in the uh, research tree because I guess it hopefully will make it more accessible to the majority of players and these are going to increase your marching speed by of your footmen and your archers by a hundred percent now previously the only way to increase your marching speed by that amount for the two troop types was by and that you could not do it permanently was by recruiting the S1 heroes iron, um, iron hand for footmen and the pacer for archers and if you see on iron hand just we'll look at his but pacer is the same so is lionheart so they they have an active seventh skill and after using this skill the hero's formation has a hundred percent bonus marching speed so effective that was only effective for 20 minutes and then it had a 15 hour cooldown other than that when it wasn't active you had a 30 percent effect in working for you in that legion so now with this tech you're basically going to get that active skill on all your troop uh, on all the troops all the that of that type um, in your legions permanently so um, that is it, it's an interesting addition and I'm gonna want it's gonna be interesting to see what happens in terms of the dynamics of will people start using more mixed legions for instance in Eden for trying to take tiles and tile battles or will you be able to uh, will it make it easier to take structures because everyone could use footmen or more people could use footmen even if they're further away from that structure because obviously it's reducing the marching time significantly of your footmen and footmen have a higher demo value um, so that is kind of um, yeah that's going to be a good aid I think Next up after those two segments is charge forward. When all units in the Legion are cavalry, might increases. But this is only an, another 10%. So okay, it's a buff for cavalry um, because they've already buffed the other two troop types. I guess they thought they should do something for cavalry. 10% extra might, that's not huge. It won't make a big difference, I guess. And then we go on to this advancing formation and side protection segments. And this is for the middle rows in your legions and again it's the 10% extra might and 10% extra resistance then we have central force which is going to increase the tactical might of your middle row of course middle and rear rows are more damage dealing so having increased tactical might will help if you, that middle row hero has quite a few combat skills that it's getting off that do damage to the opponent then okay of course we've got this major force and secret tactic segments and guess what these are the extra might and resistance for the back row and it's still 10 percent extra of each and then we have commanding force which we, again increases your back rows tactical might of course most of us do have uh, most of our kind of ranged killer heroes in the back row so again giving an extra 10 percent tactical might when a, most people will have around 100 105 percent tactical might that will make a difference that's going to increase your kills increase the damage that your back row killer hero is doing uh, and then we go on to yes then we go on to the next section which changes a little bit it is then giving additional might again for your front middle and back row so it's not dependent on troop type these segments and again it's an extra 10 percent so the max you're getting extra might and resistance because this next row's resistance is 20%. So again, it's only you know one two percent of your total possible might if you're a maxed player. Um, probably you're making a four percent five percent difference if you're a smaller spender. Um, Close-up fight 
front squad HP increase. This is significant again, giving you an extra 10% HP. Even for max players, you know, some of even max players are looking at what 220 around that HP. So getting an extra 10% is a decent increase at that rate. And for this, again, if you're a smaller spender and you can actually get to this point, then an extra 10% HP on your front row, that's going to help protect your troops and make them stay in the fight longer. That is a reasonable buff. And then finally, we've got these last three segments. Central force, mid-row tactical might increase. So that's another, t uh, this is significant, another 20% tactical might for your mid-row and an extra tactical, uh, extra 20% tactical resistance for the middle row. So this might start making people think about actually where do they want to place particularly their um, ranged heroes because you could get an extra 30% uh, tactical might which will make a big difference to those heroes that are getting off a lot of uh, skills that do high damage. Um, so this again could have a small impact on how we uh, how formations are set up potentially. And then finally the last segment of this research is back row, is tough strike and it's for back rows squads damage dealt and it increases it only by 5%. That's not huge when you consider like the other you know a lot of hero skills increase damage by significantly more like so Kura increases it by 50% in some instances. Um, I think, what is it? Uh, Son of Ragnar increases it in certain circumstances by 70%. So 5% is not huge, but again, that is going to then cause your ranged hero, if you have them in the back row, to do more damage. So I think it's going to be interesting to see what happens. Do Will you go for the extra tactical resistance in the middle row? Um, that would certainly help heroes such as Avalanche, who have, uh, or even maybe Jade Eagle, but I think you'd be have to be brave to put Jade Eagle in the middle row. But certainly, for instance, Avalanche, you could put Avalanche in the middle row. That's thirty percent extra tactical might. Back row, that this is going to still um, definitely work for heroes like a Mortal, um, Spectral Reaper, uh, Rainforest Ranger. Those heroes um, that don't need that extra tactical might because of most of their skills are passive skills or basic attack they're like more basic attack type um, heroes then having the extra damage um, is going to be more beneficial for them so um, those are my kind of initial thoughts on uh, you know how this will impact in some circumstances it it's not going to be a big impact in others I think it, it, it's going to be interesting to see what happens in Eden how people use their formations um, whether this will have a big difference in terms of the troop type we use I'm not sure um, in terms of the figures, so again, like I say, I haven't got this confirmed, but this is what I've seen in the groups the last 24 hours. Um, someone posted up that you're looking at 300,000 Courage Medals um, to complete this tech. And again, like for instance, I've got 660,000. So any experienced players out there, older players out there um, to the game, you're probably going to have those all ready to go. War badges. Apparently, it is 730,000 war badges. Now, if you put that into perspective in terms of generating it as a free-to-play player, you're probably not going to complete this tech for two years, potentially, I think. Um, and if you're looking at purchasing them, then, for instance, you do get the 25k war badge packs, which are £90 here in the UK. So you're looking at nearly £2,700 to max this tech using 25k packs which i think are limited purchase so and then if you say just did it with 18k packs uh 18k war badge packs you're looking at three thousand about three and a half thousand that's british pounds to complete this tech so it's a significant investment again which i guess all the top spenders out there who don't really have a budget they're just going to do it uh, as i say like already so quite a few players have just done it on day one um, I guess the other kind of good thing for some of us is that it's another avenue to generate Clash of Province points on Wednesdays at least, um, if you're like staggering how how you complete this tech. Um, in terms of speed ups to complete it, you're looking at apparently around 8,000 hours, um, or if you were doing it with gems, you're looking at 900,000 gems. That is doable for a lot of players, particularly players that don't have VIP and aren't spending all their gems on VIP points. Look at me with my 10,000 gems. Um, and then in terms of resources, again, apparently it's around 1G of resources. Most experienced players should have that, particularly if people have farms, that shouldn't be a problem. 
But obviously, if you're in X2 and you've got a lot of other demands still in your account for upgrades and your final kind of building upgrades and everything, um, even the wonders, for instance, when you get to this stage, they do take up quite a lot of upgrades. Like I'm on what? Uh, level 125, you're looking at nearly 20 million food to upgrade my Statue of Genius. So I think most players, if you're not, you should be able to cover the resources as well. So there we go, guys. That is everything um, I can cover for you today on Raider Legion. I haven't started um, upgrading it yet. As you can see, I don't have a great amount of uh, war badges. I've got 27,000 in my account, and I'm looking to do a video on Lofty Warrior Tech soon. I was actually supposed to do it yesterday, but then this new release caught me by surprise. So um, I hope you found this video helpful. If you have, then uh, obviously please do click on that like button. And if you could please share this video in your Alliance chat and Providence chat and through Line, WhatsApp, Viber, Discord, whatever you use to communicate with your fellow players in the game, that would be very much appreciated. Of course, as always, I'd be interested to hear the community's comments on this tech. Like, what do you think, If you're whether you're a top spender, small spender, free to play player, what are your opinions on the fact that we've got even more stuff that we're gonna have to use? Um, our limited resources on in a lot of cases uh, I think like I say it's going to make it difficult and it's another thing that's really going to be a grind for a lot of players um, bearing in mind I'm nearly three years into playing this game and potentially it could take me what five years of gameplay to finish this tech I don't know how many people are going to play this game for five years I'm not sure um, but yeah I'd just be interested to hear your comments so uh, that's everything for now thank you so much for watching and I'll see you soon